All too often it happens that when you sit down to concentrate on the breath, you stay with the breath for a little bit, and then you're off someplace else. You come back and you stay with it a little bit longer, but then it's off again. This happens so many times you begin to get discouraged. Think maybe this concentration is no good. And what happens is you throw it away. It's like having a baby. And you feed it, but then it cries. And then you have to clean up the diapers, and then you have to feed it again. And it cries. But you don't throw the baby away. You just realize that it needs extra work. It's the same with your concentration. You have to have a sense of the value even of little bits of concentration, because those are the things that are going to grow into stronger concentration. So keep at it. Keep coming back, coming back. You fuel your ability to come back with confidence, conviction. And if your conviction is weak, you have to strengthen it. Remind yourself that other people have done this in the past. They're human beings. You're a human being. They did it. You can do it, too. And you have to strengthen your mindfulness, your ability to remember that you're going to stay here. That's what all too often happens. There's a little curtain that falls down in the mind, like the curtain when you're watching a play. You move from one scene to another, they put the curtain down. Then the curtain comes up, and you're someplace else entirely. You have to watch out for the mind's tendency to put this curtain down. So you make up your mind that when the mind is going to wander off, you want to know. Because if you keep telling yourself, it's not going to wander off, it's not going to wander off, then when it does wander off, part of the mind has to deceive another part of the mind to do that. But if you're alert to the fact that okay, it will wander off, and you want to see the steps, you want to see the stages, that we begin to peer through the curtain to see that when the mind is getting ready to go, first it sends out a little feeler for something else. And when that feeler attaches to something, then it goes. So watch out for the feeler. The mind may be with the breath, or part of the mind is with the breath, but it's not the whole thing. Something else is already sneaking off to go someplace else, and you want to see that. In other words, you have to get the mind so it doesn't keep lying to itself. So remember, the mind will slip off, but you want to understand why it does that. And when you can understand it, then you can prevent it. So even though your concentration may be weak, don't throw it away. Don't get frustrated with it. Learn to value the parts when you are with the breath. If you made it with three breaths, okay, pat yourself on the back. Then say, okay, can I do it with four? About five. It may seem very meager in terms of progress. But the progress can grow exponentially. In other words, it goes from three to four, and then it goes to eight, and then it goes to sixteen, then two hundred fifty-six. It keeps multiplying. As you get a better un better understanding of how the mind moves from one object to another. What all this comes under is the, the list of the Buddha's teachings on the five strengths. You want strength of concentration, <clears throat> so you have to strengthen your conviction. You have to strengthen your persistence, your mindfulness, and your discernment. Those strengths are listed in a row. Con conviction, persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment. But it doesn't mean that you just start with the beginning ones. All five support one another. So look to see where you're, where you're lacking. Are you lacking in your conviction in yourself? Are you lacking in your conviction in the Buddhist teachings? Are you lacking in your persistence? What does it mean to be persistent? It means to understand there are some things you want to protect, other things you want to get, get rid of. And so even though the 
concentration in the beginning may be small and weak. You've got to protect it. Don't throw it away. To make another comparison, it's like planting a tree. You find the seeds. And the seeds can be very small. Think about the redwoods up north. They have tiny, tiny seeds, and yet they're the biggest trees on earth, tallest trees on earth at least. Yet they come from these tiny seeds. So you take the tiny seed of concentration and you plant it. And you look after it and make sure that all the conditions are right in terms of your conviction and your persistence, your mindfulness and your discernment. And whether it grows quickly or slowly, that's the tree's business. You know, those redwoods, for example, they do grow very slowly. But they can do things that other trees can't do. They can reach higher. And they can actually support other trees inside their crown. So it's the same with your concentration. Your concentration may be slow to grow. But slow-growing concentration actually has its advantages. There are people who find it very easy to close their minds, go puto, puto, and bang, they're in concentration. The problem is they don't understand what's happened. And so then on the days when they can't get the mind to settle down, they don't know what to do. But if you've gone through all the various obstacles that the mind sets up for itself, and you learn how to get past them, then even on days when the mind is not necessarily inclined to want to settle down, you know how to get it past those obstacles, because you've had experience. So that kind of concentration is like the redwoods with other trees growing up in its crown. It can support all kinds of insights, all kinds of good qualities in the mind. So if your concentration is weak, okay, work with your weak concentration. Don't throw it away. Don't say, I want a better concentration than this. It's like getting a baby that cries and say, I want a baby that doesn't cry. So you throw it out. Or I want a baby that doesn't have to be fed. And you throw it out. The human race would have died a long time ago if that's how we treated our children. So think of your concentration as a child. In the beginning, it's going to require lots and lots of attention. We'd like to think that once you hook on to the breath, you can put everything on automatic pilot and just coast through the hour. But concentration is not automatic pilot. It requires alertness or it requires mindfulness. In other words, when you drive, you have to be alert all the time, mindful all the time. So don't expect that it's going to get in place and just stay there without you having to care for it. It's in the caring for it that the concentration actually grows, that actually does become stronger. So the mind that says, I simply want a place to rest and I don't want to be bothered, that's the mind that just wants to go to sleep. The mind that says, I want to rest in concentration, that means you have to be ready to do the work for the concentration to recognize what needs to be encouraged, what needs to be dropped. And have the conviction that you can do this. If you're lacking in conviction, do what you can to talk yourself into wanting to do this. Talk yourself into feeling that you are competent to do this. So to check your concentration, think of those four qualities. Conviction, persistence, mindfulness, and discernment. If the concentration is weak, you have to strengthen those as well, and the concentration becomes stronger along with them. And the little bits and pieces of concentration begin to connect. Not that they flow on their own. You have to, you have to do the connecting. But then as they do connect, then they gain strength. The concentration gains a kind of momentum. That's when it requires less and less work. It doesn't require less mindfulness or alertness. Those have to be constant. But in terms of the effort that gets put in, that gets easier. 
over time. Again, it's like raising a child. After a while, the child begins to feed itself, clean itself, look after itself. You still have to watch over it. After all, it is your child, and it's still not an adult. But it's not as difficult in the first stage as when it's a baby. So even though it may be difficult in the beginning, don't think it's going to always be that way. The concentration needs to mature, but for it to mature, you have to give it what it needs. Give it your full attention. Be alert. Be mindful. Stick with it. Keep coming back, coming back. Keep encouraging yourself. And that's how your feeble concentration becomes strong. 